everybody. In today's Grasshopper tutorial, we'll be discussing lists, their structure, and how they are interpreted by Grasshopper nodes. This is key for using Grasshopper because it is all about data manipulation. So to create a list, let's place a point container. This can be found in the params menu in the geometry dropdown. You know it's a container because it has the logo black hexagon. So all this does is it contains points. So if we set multiple points, then we can click around in our Rhino viewport and place the points that are now contained in this nodes list. So we can see the list by hovering over it, but a way of displaying it with more detail is by hooking up the output of this container or any output for that matter into a panel. Now the panel will display the contents of the list with a little bit more relevant information. Here we have the header or the title of the list. We have the items in the list, which are these nine points. And we have their coordinates or their indexes, which refer to their position in the list. So if I want the, the first item in this list, which is the zeroth item, that is going to be this first point at index zero. The group title is also zero because this is a similar indexing system to this one. This is referring to this list right here under the header being the very first list. And the reason that is relevant is because you can have multiple different lists. For instance, if I right click here, I have one of my data manipulation options called graft which will put every item into its own group. Now, as you may have expected, every item is the very first or the zeroth item in its own group. This is group zero, this is group one, right? Same indexing system. One thing you'll notice is that there's two numbers here. And the first one is zero for every single group. Well. This first number is like the outermost grouping. So what does this mean? It means we have a group placed around all of the data on the outside. And it's only within that outermost group that we have our actual different groupings. So within the outer group, we have nine groupings. To get rid of this useless zero that groups all of the data together and doesn't actually separate any data, we can simplify this list. Because that zero was unnecessary, the simpler form of this list does not contain a zero at the beginning. So now that you understand simplify and graft, there's one more thing that is relevant. And so if we plug in a point container to the output of this panel, now it contains the same list, the, the grafted list where each item is in its own group. And then if we flatten it, which is this down arrow, it does the opposite of graft. Instead of putting each item in its own group, it destroys all of the grouping structure to create a list where every item is in the same group. So flatten. Now let's hook up the same panel to the output of this flattened list. And all of a sudden, we only have one grouping header again, and every item is within that group. So now it's time to discuss how Grasshopper nodes interpret lists. And what this means is how Grasshopper functions combine the different data streams that you're giving them in order to create an output. And this isn't always so intuitive, especially when your lists are grouped in weird ways. So if I place a construct point node, this is a function that by default takes in x coordinates, y coordinates, and z coordinates, pairs them up, and creates points. And the default input is zero, zero, and zero. So this is a list containing one item and that one item is zero. 
The shorthand for creating a panel, which has a value in it, is slash slash. I'll put a value of zero. And you'll notice I can plug this into all three inputs and nothing changes because they already had a default of zero. So what if, however, I plug in a longer list for one of these coordinates? Well, the range function is a way of doing that. And let's see what this range function creates by default. So if we hook up a panel to the output of this range function, then we have values ranging from zero to one. And why is that? Well, the default domain is from zero to one. And we have 11 values starting at zero and going to 10. And that's because we have 10 steps. A step is a gap between values, right? So from zero to one, there's one step. From zero to two, there's two steps. There's always one less step than number of values. Okay, so now we've got a function that creates our list of numbers. And if we plug that into the x input, now this x input contains 11 values. The y and z inputs, however, still contain one value. So let's display the output of this node with a panel. And you'll notice there's 11 values. The length of the output is the same as the length of the longest list that you input, at least in this situation. And why is that? Well, because this node takes the first item in every list, matches them up, Great, we have a zero, zero, zero. Then it takes the second item in every list, matches them up. Everything works out, and then, oh no, it's run out of values. So it just recycles the very last value that it used until it got to the end of the longest list. Okay, so we can manipulate the structure of this input in order to get an entirely different result. But first, let's try something. Let's plug in the same list to the y input. You'll notice that the, the x and y values for each point are identical. And that's because the, the inputs for the x and y coordinates always have the same position in the list. So point two is getting matched up with itself because it's always at position three in the list or index two. Great. So if we graphed one of these inputs, first let's display the actual output of this function that we're getting. And actually, first let's copy and paste this just to make it a little more clear what's going on. So if we graphed one of these inputs, now you can see that each item has been put in its own group and that is obvious by the many group headers, each containing one item at index zero. And so now we have 11 groups. We have one group here. Sure, it has 11 items, but it's just one group. And here, we only have one group as well. So what's happening? It takes the first group here, the first group here, and the first group here, everything goes well, they all exist. It matches those up and it creates the first group in this output here. There's 11 values because the longest first group had 11 values, so that gets paired up with these lists. And then for the next group, it takes the second group here, which contains one value and it pairs it up with the second group here and here, but those don't exist. So it just reuses the very last group that it used. So it uses all of these 11 values again, and this one Z value again, and it creates another group. So just to try and illustrate this point a little bit further, I'm gonna place a point list. So if I plug this point list into this point output, we get a list of numbers corresponding to the points that we plugged in and their position in the list. So as you can see, 
we have here. Actually, first, let's make these numbers bigger. Make a zero slider from a number slider from zero to two, and we'll give it two decimal points of precision. Plug that into size, and now <laughs> we can make this a little more clear. So each different color refers to a different group. And as you can see, this first group, which has 11 values in it, has x values that range from 0 to 10. And that's because we've only given it one y value here, but we've given it 10, I mean 11 x values. And we've done that over and over for every y value, and that's how we get this group, and then this group, and then this group. Great. So that was all about groups.